Brain fog is not one of those things that you're going to be able to stroll into the doctor's office and be like, help, because it's really a collection of symptoms. It's like when you show up at your desk and you just can't get into flow, like your brain feels like it can't come up with ideas, you're forgetting things, you're really easily distracted. Welcome to the Referrals Podcast. The show designed to help everyone from the solopreneur to the Fortune 500 company win the referral game. And now, here is your host, Michael J. Mayer. Welcome, 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 everyone, to another amazing episode of Referrals Podcast. Right off the bat, I've got to say a huge thank you to you, the listeners, the viewers. You have made us a top 100 podcast in the marketing category on iTunes. And I've got to thank the Canadians. Are you kidding me? The Canadians top 100 podcast on iTunes. We are trending in Canada. I don't know what that's all about, but uh, welcome. Hey, eh? I love having you. I appreciate you here. And thank you for listening, sharing and uh, rating and reviewing the podcast. I really do appreciate that. And um, I'm very excited about today's guest. Today, uh, we're going to be talking about how to get rid of brain fog and how to stay focused. And for a lot of you that uh, don't know my story, um, I actually had knee surgery in 07, December 13th, 07. By the way, that's a note. Don't ever have surgery on the 13th of the month. And then uh, a few days later, I, I checked into the hospital because I was having trouble breathing. Long story short, I actually had blood clots and I had seven. I actually died for 37 seconds. I had one that passed through my heart. Um, if you're going to do that, do it at the hospital. They saved me at the hospital. They put in a temporary pacemaker. The most painful part of the entire thing was taking that out, just for future reference. Um, and then here's the deal, though, right? Is, you know, you think of the different ways to die. Not that I want to bring that up right now, but it's like hit by a car and train and like all the different things. Like you are awake, like you can, you can control it. Well, a brain clot or I'm sorry, a blood clot is microscopic. So it's like you have no control. You can't see it coming, or at least I didn't see it coming. So I I wouldn't sleep. So literally, I didn't want to die in my sleep. So I wouldn't sleep. I would. I just kept myself awake. I would walk around our dining room table, and I probably did 50,000 laps around the dining room table in six months. And I just didn't sleep for six months. Well, my health started to wane. I started to get very pale and a lot of, th a lot of problems started to happen. Six months in, they finally medicated me and knocked me out because they didn't want to mix that medication with the, the blood thinner that I was on Coumadin, which, um, you know, takes shots in your stomach and it's, you know, they just didn't want me to bleed out either. So, but what happened is that when I came off that medication for sleep, I, I had really bad insomnia. And so from that moment on, I've really been researching sleep. How do we get better sleep? How do we stay more focused? How do we get more brain fog? And what's great about that is it led to our guest today, who is an expert in this. So you're going to love it. And I'm going to love having her. And we're going to talk about how do we stay focused and how do we just become more productive in our lives? And I'm very excited about that. Two real quick things. One, I got to give a shout out to uh, Georgie Hagen, who is on a boat right now outside the Dominican Republic, seriously. And she said, congratulations to Angela Nuss. You you wrote a powerful PS, and we talk on this show, and we talk in Gen Gen about the use of the PS in a handwritten note and how to make a call to action in the PS. And it was recognized by our top income producer and send out cards on our affiliate group. It got his attention in a stack of cards that he gets daily. And the one reason that this one card by Angela stood out in a stack of handwritten notes was because of the PS. So make sure that you are adding a PS to your handwritten notes, your any letters that you're writing and so on and so forth, the power of the PS. Georgie, kudos on that. Congratulations to you for championing Angela. I love it when our members call out other members and champion them and, and support them and uh, love that. The next thing is, hey, mark your calendars for March 1st. March Magic is back. The March Magic Challenge, 30-day challenge, it's one of our most popular challenges. 30 days, you're going to get a five-minute video from me. You're getting an action item that's going to lead to business. It's a lead-generating type of thing, a referral generating type of uh, 
video and idea. It's a strategy you go implement. And then you go to the joingengen.com group, the generosity generation, and you are accountable. So we will see whether you post under the graphic of the day that you got your activity right. And many times you've got to take a picture of your accomplishment. So a lot of times people will see their productivity just absolutely soar in March because of the March Magic Challenge. Go check it out at marchmagicchallenge.com. We'd love to have you. Speaking of loving to have you, love to have this guest on today. We have Tanessa Shears. She helps business owners optimize their health, energy, and performance by building sustainable routines. You love her already, right? Their word routine that fit into busy entrepreneurial lifestyles. She works with her clients to help eliminate brain fog, improve focus, and wake up well-rested so they can get more done in less time and feel better than they have in years. Tanessa is also the host of the Becoming Limitless podcast, sharing her expertise on optimizing health and focus for business success. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's welcome to the Referrals Podcast, Tanessa Shears. Welcome. Hey, how's it going? Thank you for having me on. (laughs) Live from Panama. Yeah, I'm in Panama right now. My family, we just up and moved here for two months. That I'm is, fine. I'm a Canadian. I'm part of that listener group that's <laughs> helping you hit that. No wonder our numbers went up. You, you, you were listening to it. I love that. And uh, you know, Panama. I can't help but think of the Van Halen song for some reason with Panama, right? So Panama, that's awesome. What made you decide to head down to Panama for two months? Is it just vacation enjoyment or working from anywhere? What do you got? Yeah. Well, we retired my husband about a year and a half ago now, and so then we've decided, like, hey. We've got a one and a four-year-old. Let's let them see the world. Let's raise them around different languages, cultures, celebrations, holidays, and stuff like that. So it's just kind of been a really fun adventure to see the world while running our businesses online, right? That's the gift of the world now is there's so many different ways you can run a business. The world is so much smaller now. It's so much like my son has been on, I think, over 250 flights. And, And it's like when I was his age, 15 years old, I had not been on a single air Air, airplane never and he's been on 250 flights so it's just they just don't see the world like like i mean i remember my world was gardner kansas and that was pretty much it and now that i mean they're playing Fortnite with people from guam or you know guatemala or whatever it may be so it's it's a, it's a it's a really cool time to be alive and and you know what if you can live anywhere Hey, see the sights and and make the world smaller for our kids. You know what a great experience. Yeah, I'm the same. I wasn't on a flight until 18, so it's cool yeah, to be same able to here. 18. To my girls, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you also had a blood clot experience. If we were kind of talking in the pre-show that you had uh, experienced something similar, what was that about? Yeah, it was a post-surgery clot as well, and I, you know, I stomped back into the doctor's office and I was like, "Hey, you listen up." I I have a background in biomedical physiology and kinesiology. So I know when something is wrong and they were like, it's nerves. I was like, no, nerves don't affect the entire lower leg. They would affect the right side or the left side, depending on what nerve was affected. And I, you know, stomped and stomped and asked for tests. Turns out I had two of them, two DVTs that yeah. were migrating up and I caught them in time, thankfully. But same as you, it was like the, the, uh, the blood thinners and the whole shebang. Yeah. 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 Scary times for sure. It, 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 it I mean, it, it's amazing that you think of all, I mean, you don't think of that way to die, right? You think of the, you don't think, it, and it's microscopic. It's this super small thing that, that could make it happen. It's, it's, it's a crazy thing. Well, all right. So this led us into a conversation around like brain fog specifically. So what is brain fog and, and how does it affect our business? Yeah, well, brain fog is not one of those things that you're going to be able to stroll into the doctor's office and be like, help because it's really a collection of symptoms it's like when you show up at your desk and you just can't get into a flow like your brain feels like it can't come up with ideas you're forgetting things you're really easily distracted and it's the thinking is slow I kind of equivalent it to if you were to go for a walk on the beach you know how you can do it but it's just more work it's less effective brain fog is the equivalent of thinking through sand it's like you can Mm. do it but it just feels slow and it feels like it takes a lot of work and it's just not very effective right and so how it's affecting our business is like 
your brain is the single best asset in your business. It's more than your programs and anything else. It is creating your ideas. It is leading. It is having conversations. It is the visionary. It is everything in your business, right? And so I look at it as like, okay, if my brain is foggy and not performing well, and I'm drained and I'm irritated and I'm grumpy and all of these things, I'm not protecting the asset. And so just natural exploration, I found really quick that sleep is one of the best ways we can protect our brain when it comes to our health. Love that. So, so how, what causes it? I mean, all right. So, so we know the problem and I'm telling you, every one of our listeners has experienced this. They, they have. And, and so if we can prevent it, then we're going to have a better day the next day. So, so what causes brain fog? Yeah, it's inflammation. Inflammation in the body can come in, in so many ways. And like I've worked with tons of entrepreneurs. And I can tell you that these are the three ways it shows up the most. One is it's not getting enough quality sleep because there's a difference of saying, yeah, I was in bed seven hours versus I got seven hours of sleep. That was decent quality. That's number one. Number two is when it comes to our food. And the big two ways there are like, if your blood sugar is all over the place, it's up, it's down, it's processed food. Or if you're eating inflammatory seed oils or just foods that don't agree with your digestive tract. And the last one, stress that has gone unchecked. Uh, we deal with it as entrepreneurs. We're not going to escape that. That's just part of the deal. However, when it's starting to affect our sleep and it's starting to affect our ability to fall asleep, stay asleep, or up at night having trouble falling asleep, this is usually when that stress has become chronic and it creates a lot of inflammation. So we're looking at one of those three places. And the reason I love to start with sleep is because... Uh, <laughs> What entrepreneur doesn't feel like they have a lot on their plate right now? And so sometimes this idea of like adding health things to do seems like another demanding task. Like, where do I even fit that? But sleep is free. You're doing it anyways. Let's just make it better. That's why I like to start there. It also has the biggest bang for your buck. Yeah, it truly is our superpower in a lot of ways. It it it's, it heals us. You know, it, you think about, you know, the, the, the superheroes, they get shot or they get hit or even like Deadpool, right, is they heal on their own. Well, guess what? That's what sleep does for us. It it helps us heal on our own. You know, when you work out, you don't like immediately right after that, see a growth in your muscles. No, what happens is you're actually tearing your muscles down and then you go to sleep and that's where your muscles grow. So sleep is imperative to, to our health, period. I mean, it's it, bottom line. So why do particular entrepreneurs, why do they struggle with making time for their health as much as anybody? Why do they seem to struggle with it? I mean, why is it us? Yeah, I think part of it is also because we have this mindset of like, oh, I'm just going to wait until it calms down. I'm just going to wait until I get my next, you know, hit the next revenue milestone, hire the next team member, whatever it is, get the next client. Then things will calm down. Then I will have time to work on my health, right? Because we tell ourselves like, oh, it's just this phase of my business. I've just got to put a little more in. And, we, and it does not intentional. Like mm. it's one thing at a time falls off. Like we just start exercising less and then it's just, okay, we're not exercising. And then it's like, oh, okay, well, instead of cooking food, we're just grabbing food. And it's one thing at a time and it's so slow. And a lot of the times, especially, you know, from launch to 100K, it's a whole different game at that point. You're just like, eyes down, trying to figure out how to make this work. And then you come up and you're like, whoa, I haven't taken care of myself in so long. And now my, my life is so busy. Where do I fit it in? So as entrepreneurs, we kind of get to this place where it's like, as soon as we hit a goal and we're like, this is the place I should have worked on it. It's at this point that we're like, oh, this didn't really feel the way I thought it was going to feel. So our next goal, that'll be the one that next revenue mouth, then it'll really be okay. So we kind of play this like when then fallacy of like, when I get there, then I'll have time. And we end up just, you know, it goes by the wayside. Years pass. We don't feel great. And all of a sudden we realize we've got a long way off from where we want to be. Yeah, I love the analogy that I've heard about this is, is the juggling. Like we're we're juggling a lot of balls, right? We're juggling a lot of balls. And, it, you know, the business, the revenue, the employer, the employee, the 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 worker, the 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 dad, the mom, the the son, the daughter, the the whatever it may be. And we have all these these balls that we're juggling. And well, we don't want to drop them. But but if we drop the work ball, it will bounce up and catch, right? But the health ball is glass. If we drop, if we drop the the health ball, it's going to shatter. And we've got to make sure the health ball is one of those that we are juggling that is a part of what we're doing. And we need to realize that without health, 
we don't have anything else. You're not, you're not going to worry about work because you're not, you're not going to have your health. And I just, I, I've always loved that analogy that it's got to be health first. It's like, first, love yourself. First, take care of yourself. And that sounds like what you're talking about here. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's one of the things we don't quite get. We're always like, okay, I'm just going to jump back online and work for another hour or two instead of sleep because I'll get more done. Then I will feel better about something. But what we don't really recognize is if you go and you take two hours out of your sleep, let's say you're cutting out the majority of your deep sleep because it happens at that early part of the night you're actually stealing from tomorrow's productivity because so many of us, we work through the day and we have this afternoon slump that we hit and our brains don't work. And we're like, what admin tasks can I put then? Because I'm not very creative then, or I can't stay focused then. And you lose all this time in your afternoon to being unfocused or not being able to do quality work. And then we wonder like, oh, well, here I am back at 1030 to catch up because I couldn't get done what I needed to today. So I always think of it as like we jeopardize our health thinking we'll get ahead, but it's really stealing from just the productivity of tomorrow. We end up on this hamster wheel where we never feel caught up and we never feel healthy and our nervous system is fried and we're tired all the time. And then we sometimes just are like, why am I doing this? This is not why I started a business. It was supposed to be freedom. It was supposed to be fun. It was supposed to be relationships. It was supposed to be connection. It was supposed to be impact. And here I am just so exhausted, wondering how much longer I can keep this up. Mm. I love that. If you don't mind, I want to I want to go back to the inflammation com- comment that you had, right? Is what are the causes of inflammation other than not getting quality sleep? Yeah, so uh having sustained high blood sugar is a good one. So a lot of us hear blood sugar and we think, oh, I don't have diabetes. I'm fine. Because for me, that used to always be like, well, blood sugar, diabetes, I, it's not a problem for me. But the thing is, whenever we eat specifically foods that have carbohydrates in them, or if we overeat too much protein, our blood sugar goes up. And what goes up goes down. But what ends up happening is when we have sustained increased blood sugar, it causes inflammation in our body. It causes inflammation to the blood vessels. It causes inflammation to the brain. And a lot of that just leads to this fogginess, right? Because when our blood sugar is sustained, our brain doesn't work properly. Our body does not work properly. And that's when you see the development of a lot of diseases like cardiovascular disease and weight gain and metabolic syndrome and all of these type of things. So that's a really big one when it comes to food. So what's the cure for that? Is it is it more smaller meals? Is it uh, avoiding overeating? Is it is it I mean, you know, a lot of people talk about intermittent fasting where you can eat as much as you want for 12 hours as long as you take 12 hours off or, you know, six hours you can eat and 18 off. So it, what's what's the cure for that from a blood sugar aspect? I think part of it is understanding what foods have the biggest impact on our blood sugar, right? Because we look at the food group of carbohydrates and I feel like carbs get a bad rap, but a vegetable is also a carb. And I think we really are thinking of the more processed carbs. So I always like to recommend like the the carbohydrates that we eat that are powdered, think sugar, think flour. When anything powdered hits your bloodstream, it has a much larger surface area, right? If you think back to like chemistry eight or chemistry nine, right? So you're going to get a yeah. bigger reaction, a bigger spike. Right. Those are going to affect you a heck of a lot more than the blueberries and strawberries with the fiber or the vegetables, right? So it's not about carbs or no carbs. It's like, what carbs are you eating? And so we start to look at making sure that the majority of the carbs that we are intaking are from the ones that have the higher fiber and that are the less flour, right? So that's that's just a general thing. If you're eating whole foods, you're going to be a lot better off than the processed foods. But if you want to get like a little techie and a little nerdy with it, something that's uh, gaining a lot of popularity right now is a device that you can stick on the back of your arm called a continuous glucose monitor. And what it does is it feeds directly into an app on your phone, much like your Apple Watch would or anything else Fitbit. And what it does is it will show you in real time what your blood sugar is. And you get to see when I eat this food, do I go out of range? And the great thing is about these, and I have many clients that love doing these because you are able to see how rice affects you, how bananas affect you, because you and I could both eat a banana and have entirely different reactions. So a lot of it is theory until then, but it's fascinating. And I think a worthwhile experiment if you care about, you know, uh, brain health and uh, healthy weight maintenance, making sure that the way that we're eating is supporting a healthy body. Yeah. So the aura doesn't do that, huh? 
No, the aura ring does not do that. Yeah, you've got yours on too. No, the aura ring has not do blood sugar. It does. I always think everything aura else. Ring. <laughs> yeah, the aura ring is like I think of as the the king when it comes to anything to do with resilience, recovery, and rest tracking, and it pairs really nicely with a lot of the fitness trackers. So I love aura ring for that. I give all my clients aura rings. They're just the best. <laughs> so how do you feel about caffeine? Oh, this is a great question. So I'm in the middle, like, you know how we mentioned- I As I take a sip of coffee. How do yeah. you feel about caffeine? <laughs> yeah, right? Um, it has significant <laughs> impacts on sleep. Keep in mind, there are people that digest and absorb caffeine differently than others. However, in general, if you are someone who drinks a lot of coffee, you are going to find that it impacts your deep sleep. And remember how we talked about that as being good for recovery? Um, and specifically, you know, what's funny since being here in Panama, we happened to show up at our first Airbnb and there was no coffee. And so I inadvertently have been off coffee for a month now. And wow. I, have been, I have been getting aura ring sleep scores in the 95 to 97 range. And wow. that is exceptionally high. My normal scores were in the nineties, but it took this to really get it to the next level. And what it did for me was it eliminated wake ups in the middle of the night and added about half an hour extra to deep sleep. And I was only ever drinking one cup. So it's yeah. so fun. This is such a timely conversation for me because uh, I woke up at three o'clock this morning. Uh, yeah, for about 30 minutes, right? And uh, it's like, wow, why, why did I do that? And, you know, maybe it was the caffeine that I had during the day, for sure. Well, yeah. all right. So let's, let's, we talked a lot about the problems and everybody self-diagnosed that they have all of this, unfortunately. And all right. So what can we do to create clearer, like more focused thinking? First of all, I mean, I think that's the, that's the answer. Like, what do I, what do I want? I want more clearer focused thinking. If I could just have more focus time, I know I'm going to get more done. Yeah. The first thing we want to start doing is what we call doing the boring work. and. So here's how I kind of like to think of sleep. Sleep is one of those things that here's the answer I get most of the time. I'm fine. It's okay. I get enough sleep. I get my seven hours. It's fine. But I'm going to tell you a story. When I got pregnant with my first daughter, I decided to get myself at the time a Fitbit or rings weren't a thing yet, or they were just in their infancy. I got myself a Fitbit and I was like, I'm going to take all the steps. I'm going to be the fittest pregnant lady. Nobody told me about the pelvic pain that was coming. So I was like, what else does this thing do? Oh, look, it tracks sleep. Now at the time I was this person, I go to bed at 11 and I wake up at seven. I get seven hours of sleep. I'm great. Despite the fact that I had, you know, brain fog and felt exhausted in the afternoon and all the things, but my sleep was fine. I was telling myself, but then why was Fitbit telling me I was getting six hours of sleep? I was so confused. And it was during that time that I learned like, wait a second, my brain doesn't sleep the entire time I am in bed. And since then, I've really noticed there are four times that we spend awake. The time it takes us to fall asleep, when we wake up between sleep cycles and don't even notice it, that's totally normal. Um, when we get woken up by a dog, a kid, we have to go pee, something like that. And when we're waking up in the morning. And so what I do as part of my work is I analyze the aura ring data of entrepreneurs. And I can tell you over the last five years, most entrepreneurs are in that hour to an hour and a half awake per night. So when I hear, yeah, I get seven hours of sleep and I, I go to bed at 11, I wake up at six and my brain goes minus an hour at minimum, we're only in the six hour, five hour, 45 minute. And that is not enough to take care of your brain. So what, what we're trying to get across here is the first thing we really have to have this aha moment to is sleep opportunity. You have to give yourself enough time in bed to get seven hours of sleep. And that is usually in bed for eight or more hours. <laughs> that, that is crazy. I, I, I had to pick up my aura, right. I, and I'm trying to look at the details now, but it's, it's not given them to me yet, but uh, it's just like I, 86 is my sleep score. And it, it's like, how the heck did I get an 86 sleep score and wake up? Well, you just nailed why is because waking up is kind of part of the normal and it ended up that I did go back to sleep because it was 3 a.m. or whatever it was. And it looked like I jumped back into decent sleep. But uh, sleep efficiency has been 85 percent. and My sleep score was 86 percent. So interesting. Oh, and then. It, oh, yeah. Here we go. We're digging in. I'm telling you, <laughs> do we have the best guest in the history? Seven percent <laughs> deep sleep in the danger zone. Thirty five minutes of deep sleep. Isn't that interesting? So even though this, and I would have never looked at that because I only look at the sleep efficiency and sleep score. 
So, but I, I just found if you go down, you're going to find, and it's red, right? You can see the one red one, deep sleep. So nailed that one. So it looks like I need to get better at some things. Um, all right. So what would you recommend to me to get more deep sleep to, to, I mean, how would you con, you know, console or coach me and let me know what I need to do? This is why I love data because we love return on investment. We love numbers and we also don't like wasting time. So if you were to walk into my, my, my space and I, you were to say to me like, what do I do for deep sleep? The fact that we now know it's deep sleep means we can skip 20 other habits that you don't need to waste your time on. Isn't that mm -hmm. fun? Right? Yeah. So when it comes to, when it comes to deep sleep, what we want to look at is getting a minimum of 60 minutes per night. Now that is something deep sleep is unique. It's not the same as REM sleep. Deep sleep does decrease with age. And this is one of those things that it is bringing. easy, easy. Don't call yeah. me old on the podcast. People don't oh. like that. I'm just telling you. <laughs> and no, I had 35 minutes, just so you know. That's, that's, that's is, where my deep sleep was. Yeah, no, this is more speaking to the fact that it is normal to see lower numbers depending where you are. And it's easier to get more deep sleep when you're younger. So this is why I like to be protective of it, right? Really, mm -hmm. sleep is so much more important than just something we go to sleep and wake up, like really understanding it. So when we look at deep sleep, there's a couple of things that impact it pretty profoundly. Um, the first one I always like to look at is caffeine because what caffeine does is we have these receptors in our brain and caffeine blocks them mm -hmm. and the problem is when they are blocked we have trouble falling asleep or staying asleep so the first things i would look at is okay are you having any caffeine within 12 hours of bedtime that's the first question i would ask yes i have one o'clock mm, how many hours 12 yes yeah, yeah, so at one at one o'clock, I have three hundred milligrams of caffeine. Yeah, so here's in the a crazy bang. Thing. Here's the crazy thing about caffeine. So you said three hundred milligrams at one o'clock by it's 7 a bang p. drink. Yeah, yeah. So seven p.m. at night, one hundred and fifty milligrams is still fully active, blocking those receptors in your brain. One in the morning, you still have seventy-five milligrams of active caffeine. That's almost a full cup of coffee, fully active. And the mm. thing is, it directly impacts deep sleep. So. Here's the thing. There's a couple of things you could do for deep sleep. Like we said, right? You could have try an earlier bedtime that is more consistent. You could work with caffeine. Intensity of exercise also directly impacts deep sleep. But given so higher, what you, make yeah, 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 exercise yeah. at a higher intensity. Yeah, yeah, okay. and not like five days a week intense, but having periods of intensity. But here's what I would do. Given what you just said, I was like, okay. I would experiment with only that for one week and I would just move it back a little bit and see what the rest of the week looks like. I love this experiment one thing at a time because you will be able to see in your data, did this work? And if it did, great, that's the one and you don't have to worry about adding in all these other hacks. It's a really efficient way to use your time and feel better with it. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Um, yeah, so it's usually like a bang at one and then work out two to four, two to three, somewhere in there. And uh, I, I think it's going to be harder for me to be more intense working out. So I think it's going to be bumping. I need to bump the caffeine earlier, right? Like 11, something like that. Yeah, so, there's two ways you can go about it. You could either move the caffeine back, which would be option one, or you could cut the amount in half, right? Yeah. There's, you can play with multiple variables, variables of it, but I think it's about being consistent with what you choose, yeah. watching the data. Data doesn't lie. It's not emotional. It doesn't have feelings about it. It either worked or it didn't. You get to decide whether you want to no, keep I it. No, I think my aura is wrong. My aura is lying to me. <laughs> my my aura is being manipulated by somebody. It's fixed. I don't know. Somebody, my wife is doing it. I'm just certain. I, but no, I, I, I'm a believer in data too. It, it's funny as, you know, we're talking about really establishing great routines, rituals, and, and, you know, rhythm. Right. And those are the, I just did a, a big thing on, you know, the three R's of business. There's the three R's of school, which is writing, reading, and arithmetic. And I believe the three R's in, in business is the, it is rhythm, routine, and rituals. And, you know, it, it's, I have a ritual of the 300 milligrams at one o'clock and, but knowing what I know about rituals is it, I can move it to 11 very easily. I can, I, you know, I have control over the, the rhythm routine and rituals. So guess what? It's easier to adjust, you know? So I love that. Uh, but I, I don't know if I could work out it any more intensely. I, I'll just, I'm, I'm, a uh, I think I, I 
I think I hit the paranervous system pretty damn hard. So I listen, uh, people are like, oh, you're the kindest, most generous, softest soul, you know? And then like, I'm so glad you don't see me in the weight room because I listen to super hard metal and I like, don't bother me at the weight room. I'm, la- I'm that guy. Right. So it's, uh, it's, it's kind of an interesting, I have a dichotomy. I must be a Gemini. Oh wait, I am. Right. So, but all right. So we're, we're kind of talking about the best ROI from our health. And so to kind of dive deeper into that concept, I, I, I don't, I'm not sure if I've heard that concept of having a return on investment in our health, but it makes perfect sense. You know, one of the things that we talk a lot about in our, uh, we teach 30 day challenge classes on rituals. One of the rituals is, is this concept of a, a Sunday night ritual and a nightly ritual. And, and one of those is, is like an eating plan. Like, so Sunday, make your eating plan for the week. And we're pretty good about that. Are we perfect? No. Fridays seem to seem to be pizza night lately. Uh, we have a 15-year-old. I don't know if I mentioned that. But it's one of those where, you know, that eating plan is kind of like you're saying, it, it's an investment in our health. It really is. And, it, and it's a plan for our health versus just reacting to whatever foods come along that week. You know, I found when I'm reactive, I eat very poorly. When I'm proactive, I eat like a king. I eat so well. So I love the thought of an ROI on, on your health. That's a, That could be a great title for your next book. Yeah, right. Well, if, if you even like think about where we go and we're like, yeah, I'm going to get healthy. We just, what do we go on YouTube, Instagram? How many people have how many ideas? Your friend tried this. Oh, like, and, and you end up doing stuff and you have no idea if it's affecting you positively, negatively, if it's a good use of your time or not. And this is why data, like you can tell if you go start doing six one hour workouts a week and your heart rate variability, which is your body's fight or flight or rest and digest score, if that tanks, then you know that that's not the plan for you because your recovery is not there. So it just allows you to make educated decisions that are personalized to you. And then it's all just one big experiment. That's fun, right? Yeah, you're... You're big into energy, I think. I mean, you're yeah. like a you're like an energy bunny. I I mean, just the I mean, you're full of energy. And and what's interesting is, you know, I'm already somewhat of a high vibrancy, high energy type of person. My energy during this conversation has gone up. And I always notice that. I I always I I notice with every Zoom, every one to one, everywhere I go. I'm always uh I have this secondary awareness of how is my energy right now? And, uh, you know, did you raise that energy or have you always been a high energy person? Like, tell me a little bit about that. And I know this is totally off script and this is not one of the questions that we said we were going to ask you, but welcome to referrals podcast. (laughs) So. Yeah, I would say like, I've always been an upbeat person. I would say that, but there's just, it just hits different when you wake up in the morning and you're excited to start your day. Right. And that just goes into so many different habits that I bring into play that are purposely targeted to help me feel my best. Like I just decided that there was no amount of money in the bank, business success or anything like that, that was going to, I was going to wait around for to start feeling the way I wanted to feel in my life. Like, so I figured I'm going to start figuring this out right now. And I know that to feel my best, I need to go through my body to access my mind so that it is clear. And I'm going to tell you since really taking my health seriously. And I mean, my sleep, I am militant with my sleep. And this is not something that I obviously teach because not everyone's going to love it as much as I do, but if I can excite someone just a little bit, but if I am able to, you know, really take care of my sleep, eat really good foods, if I'm able to move my body daily, if I am able to manage my stress, I am able to have a quiet mind. And I think this is it because I have, I, I'm a really happy person and not that I don't experience negativity, but it's quiet in my brain. And that was something that I didn't get much of when I was less healthy. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of stress. There was a lot of noise. There was a lot of negativity. There was a lot of what if this doesn't work. But since I have really started taking care of my nervous system and my health, it clears up so much space to feel better on a regular basis. Yeah, that's that that's it hits it on the head is is I've always discovered that when I'm at my healthiest, my business is also at its healthiest. It, instead of 
when I was early in my career and I gave up a lot of my health to sacrifice for business. And, uh, and you would think, well, your business just soared. Right. And it's like, no, no, it, it, I lost some clients and it, it, it was a very stressful time. That's what I remember. And, yeah. and, uh, you know, and I didn't have my health at that time either. So it was a bad, bad, but you know what? I carved out time for my health. I, I can tell you that I really started hitting the weights hard about two years ago. And ever since then, we've had record types of months. And I think they're aligned. And my energy has been higher. I mean, I, I'm saying yes to speaking engagements. I said no to two years ago. So it, it's, it's been very, very interesting to see those go hand in hand. Um, do you have a nightly ritual? Do you have a pre-sleep ritual? And yeah. what is it if so? And and just so everybody knows, that's not necessarily a question on here, but I'm deeply curious about that because I I teach it. I love it. You know, it's 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 a it's a I truly believe it's a difference maker. Yeah. So I have a one and a four year old. And so it was really interesting. When I had kids, I have never had better sleep in my life than since I have kids. Now I'm not talking about those, you know, six months post. I'm talking about since having kids as a whole, because what it has allowed me to do was put an anchor point in my night that wasn't there before. Mm -hmm. So they go down at 8 p.m. And I use that as an anchor point for me to wind down now. Because mm -hmm. before, I'd be like, I don't know, do we want to watch another couple episodes of TV? There was nothing really anchoring my evening. So that anchor point made a huge difference. So my evening routine, I keep in mind, my lights are usually out by 9 p.m. And that's just me. That's my genetic chronotype. That's what I love. It's not right. It's just how I work. Sure. That night starts by dinner ending by 5.30. Because one of the things, we didn't get to this, one of the things that affects deep sleep is if we are exercising or eating within two to three hours of bed because of how it affects heart rate and blood pressure. That's right. So I make sure food is done, 5.30 to 6.00. From there, we'll either go out for a family walk, because if you can go for a post walk or post meal walk, it helps to bring blood sugar back down. And this is not only just good for health, this is good for sleep. So I'm already we're, we're planning our night so that we sleep well because of how much it affects our day. So when we get home from this walk, we'll take them upstairs. Kids are showered. Sound machines on. Everything gets dark. This is around 730 and my phone goes down. That's the last time I see my phone is about 730 p.m. From there, kids go down at eight. And then we we have in every other lamp lamp in our bedrooms is a red light bulb because I want to be cueing my brain with the correct color light because yep. the color of light tells you whether to be alert or sleepy. So right. we turn on all the red lights in the house. We drop the temperature if it's summer because that makes a huge impact on health as well. And then at eight o'clock, I will jump in bed. And I will read until I fall asleep, which is usually between 830 and nine. Um, but otherwise in there, I mean, sometimes if I'm having a stressful day, I'll do a little bit of like a cyclical sigh. You heard of cyclical sigh? Uh, is that a type of meditation? No. Oh, I have to share it with you. It's so good. This is something I learned from Andrew Huberman. He's a neuroscientist. I didn't okay. make this. Yep. I'm um, this. Yeah. So he, um, he talks about this type of breathing and it is the single fastest way to disengage your nervous system. And what it is, is it is a very deep inhale through the nose, followed by a tiny inhale of as much extra as you can get, followed by a long exhale. And it sounds kind of like this. And that exhale is as long as you can, because when you breathe out, your heart rate slows down. When you inhale, it speeds up. If you want to pull yourself and your nervous system, honestly, whether you are in the middle of an anxious workday or you're before bed, extended exhale breathing is one of the best things you can do to take your body offline. I literally did that two nights ago. Uh, wow. Yeah, I didn't know it was the cyclical sigh was the extended uh, exhale. I'm yeah. I'm a I'm a believer in the extended exhale meditation for sure. Yeah, um, right? yeah, and I and 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 I'm a I mean I can do it in five minutes. Like that's a that's mm -hmm. about how long you know I, I I it used to take a lot longer, but I can definitely feel the effects of it in five minutes or less at this point. And even just thinking about it. I can feel the effects. How about that for craziness? But right. I, I love that. But, you know, it, it's so interesting is, is so I, I teach um, dreams as the nightly ritual. So it's sweet is the Sunday evening ritual. And it like yours, it kind of starts more during the day than at night. So the Sunday evening ritual is sweet, but then dreams is the nightly ritual. 
and it's dim time, you talk about an anchor point. It's a dim time and, and you need to have a personal dim time, maybe a family dim time. And then the R is for reading and, and yours is really DRM, DRM. Yours is dim time, reading, meditation, sleep, right? Well, I added E and A and the E, the E is for evaluate, right? Just evaluate your day, you know, do a, do a quick review of your day. What went well, well, what went right? What reflect on your day, just how to go, you know? And a lot of times when you do that, you realize it wasn't maybe as bad as you thought it was that one bad client or that one bad meeting or the thing that you got turned down or the no that you might've gotten. Um, and then the A is for appreciations. And I'm, I'm a huge believer in appreciation. It's just, I appreciate because of whatever. And, and then you've got appreciations, you know, do five, six, 10, whatever you want to do. And then that leads right into meditation with, with, all right, lights out and you are, you know, you, you're focusing on your breathing and then S is for sleep. And, and the dreams has been very, very helpful for thousands of people. I'm, I'm a, I'm a big fan of it. And I love your, your, your concept of the anchor point and that how it co coincides with that dim time, you know, what is your dim time? And we've discovered that if you have a dim time and a wake up time that are the same, then, then a lot like the heavens open up and the doors of opportunity will open up for you and your energy is going to be higher. So I, I, I mean, I love this. This is, this is fantastic information. And so let's, let's put a PS on this. Let's add some bonuses, right? So You've got a free bonus or download that listeners can um, look at and review about energy. Can you tell us a little bit about what's in the download? And we'll actually give them a couple of places to go. We'll we'll have referralspodcast.com for people to download that. And then you've got it at your website as well at, at tanessashears.com slash energy, right? So what yeah. what uh, what's on the download? Yeah. So what you've been actually hearing throughout this whole podcast are little biohacks, right? They're little little tweaks that you can make to help accelerate your energy and productivity and focus and all of that. Well, this, this is called 12 Ways to Biohack Your Energy because it is a collection of the 12 biohacks that I have found to be the most effective. Now, this is meant to kind of be used like a buffet. You go up, you take one, you go back, you try it, you finish it, and then you go up for another one. And I have linked most of these in here to a podcast episode in which I go deep on, here's what it is, here's how it affects you, your life, your business, and here's the exact steps you can take so that you can deep dive on it if you want. And I'm a huge fan of like the information needs to be out there. I don't gatekeep. You are going to find how to do everything there. And then it's the implementation is where I offer the coaching service. But the podcast is a wonderful source of information if you want to dig in on anything we talked about today. Yeah, I love that. And the podcast is called the Becoming Limitless Podcast. And that's iTunes, Google, Google Stitcher and or Stitcher, Google Play. And uh, is it on Audible yet? Oh, I don't think Audible. I didn't know Audible bid podcasts. Amazon Audible has podcasts. Yeah, you need to definitely be out there as well. We've had, I know we've had a lot of people find the referrals podcast on Audible uh, and it's free. They're Amazing. free on, on Audible. So, you know, it's kind of another, another angle. And um, I give full credit and props to Sherry Mayer, our engineer and producer of the show for finding that and figuring out how the heck to do it. So I don't know how to do it, but uh I, I'm just, I'm just the talking head. I'm the marionette, right? I'm the puppet and she's got her hand and she's used, you know, she's, she manipulates me. So it's a, it's a good, it's a good wife, good life kind of conversation. So man, this has been uh, absolutely terrific. And I love, I love how you've, you ritualized it and, and truly added the routine to it, but also gave us some, some, some thoughts on exactly how to maximize our sleep. And once again, you know, sleep is the winner. It, it just, it, it, in today's world, Tanessa, all we're seeing is the 5 a.m. club becoming the 4 a.m. club and the 3 a.m. club and, and the badge of honor that that they say that, that they get up at 3 a.m. and they're getting five hours of sleep or four hours of sleep. And, you know, then of course you find out later they have cancer. You know, it's like, you know, it, it's just one of those where, you know, I'm a full believer in eight hours of sleep. I really am. I think there's a reason that through history, humans have gotten eight hours of sleep. And everyone that's, I mean, here's the thing. I, I just, I have a message for, you're not a freaking Navy SEAL. 
I'm just telling all of you, everybody that none of you are Navy SEALs. I'm just going to throw that out and just realize that be aware of where you're getting your information from and your advice from is, listen, you're not a freaking Navy SEAL. Just be a human, like be the best father, be the best son, be the best human, the best person you can be. And it doesn't require getting up 5 a.m. and going 75 days without everything, right? It just doesn't. You don't need to sacrifice everything to get anything. And that's the truth. I'm just going to throw it. That was not Tanessa saying that. That was me saying that. I just want to throw that out there. But it is one of those where, you know, you and I are talking about one degree tweaks. Success is not a 180 degree turn. Success is a one degree tweak. Make one little change in your life. If you make a major change, you're probably going to get a major illness You're or you're going to have a major downfall. I, I've just seen it so many times. And uh, I just, I just love it. And I love where, where, you know, where you're coming from. And um, just, this has been a really enjoyable conversation. Any final words of wisdom for our listeners or viewers on, you know, the whole concept of doubling your energy, doubling your focus, getting ready to brain fog, you know, that kind of thing. I always just love to leave this. Take a moment today, whether you're on a walk, whether you're working out, whether you're folding laundry, whatever it is you're doing. And just imagine this. How would your life be different if you woke up feeling well rested every day? What would be different? How would your relationships be different? How would your business be different? How would your whole outlook on your life be different if you woke up feeling the way you want to feel? And then go get that. It's mm. so possible. It's so possible. One tweak at a time, you're you could feel entirely different in a month from now if you start today. So go start today. I love it. I love it. It's about waking up better. It's not about waking up earlier. It's about waking up better. And that's uh that's a that's a beautiful way to put it. Tanessa, I have just uh loved this. I really appreciate it. For those of you that are listening, you want 12 biohacks to your to your energy and life, is go to referralspodcast.com, look at the download, and or go to tanessashears.com slash energy. We all could use more energy. And uh today she has shown us how we can raise that energy. Tanessa, thank you so much for being our guest here today on Referrals Podcast. Yeah, you're so welcome. I appreciate you welcoming me into the community. Love it. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a wrap on today's referrals podcast. Make sure that you check out marchmagicchallenge.com. And timely enough, we are teaching time mastery and energy mastery in April. I encourage you to get into the March Magic Challenge, get the ball rolling. It's what it is. It's 30 small one degree tweaks that you can make on a daily basis in the March Magic Challenge. Go to marchmagicchallenge.com and that will gear you up to maximize your time blocking and your time mastery. And if you're going to work on time mastery, you should also work on your energy mastery because we know those are our two most precious assets, time and energy. So that's what we're coming. That's what's coming up in the next couple of months. And oh my gosh, I just thought of what our next podcast is. You're going to want to make sure you tune in next Tuesday for our podcast. You are going to absolutely love it almost as much as you love this one. Ladies and gentlemen, have a great one. We'll see you next time on Referrals Podcasts.